This video explains how to calculate correlations using the core function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. As a first step in this video, we need to create two data objects based on which we can calculate a correlation. And we can do that as you can see in lines two to eight of the code. So in line two, I'm first setting a random seed for reproducibility. And then in the next step, I'm using the R norm function to create a randomly distributed variable that I'm calling X. So after running line four of the code, you can see that this variable is appearing at the top right. And we can print the first six values of this variable using the head function. So after running line five of the code, you can see that our variable x contains random numeric values. We can now create a second variable once again using the R norm function. As you can see in line seven of the code, I'm adding the values of the variable x to this random variable because I want to create a correlated variable and I'm storing the output of this in the variable y. So after running line seven of the code, another variable is appearing at the top right, which is called y. And once again, I can use the head function to print the first six elements of this variable to the RStudio console. So after running this line of code, you can see that we have created another randomly distributed variable. Now, if we want to calculate the correlation between these two variables, x and y, we can use the core function, as you can see in line 10 of the code. And within the core function, we simply need to specify the names of our two variables. So in this case, the variables are called x and y. So after running line 10 of the code, you can see that another output is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. The value is 0 0.63733. And this is actually the correlation between our two variables. So as you can see, our two variables are positively correlated. Now, what you have to know is that by default, the core function uses a Pearson correlation. However, it's also possible to specify different types of correlations using the method function, as you can see in lines 12 and 14 of the code. So in line 12 of the code, I'm calculating a candle correlation. So after running this line of code, another output is returned. And this output is the correlation based on the candle correlation coefficient. And then we can also use the method Spearman to calculate a Spearman correlation, as you can see in line 14 of the code. And as you can see, the Spearman correlation corresponds to the value 0.65. Now, in the first examples, I have explained how to calculate correlations between two variables without any missing values. However, it's a typical problem when you are calculating certain statistics that some of your data might be missing or might be not available. And how to handle that is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 16 of the code. So as a first step, I'm creating another variable which contains an A values. So in line 16 of the code, I'm first duplicating our X variable that we have created in the beginning of the tutorial. And I'm calling this duplicate X and A. And then I'm assigning to some of the values in this vector the an A value. So in this case, I'm assigning an A to the first, third, and fifth element of our vector object. So after running line 17 of the code, our new vector object is updated. And we can see that by printing the first six elements of our new vector to the RStudio console by running line 18 of the code. And now you can see that the first, the third, and the fifth values of our new vector object X and A are not available. Now, if we apply the core function to this new vector object to calculate the correlation between our new vector object x and a and our variable y, then the RStudio console returns the value n a. And the reason for that is that some of the observations in our variable x have been set to n a before. 
So if we want to calculate the correlation only between the complete cases of our two variables, then we can use the use argument, as you can see in line 22 of the code, and we have to set the use argument to be equal to complete ops. So this removes all the cases where either the variable x or the variable y contains an, an a value. So if you run line 22 of the code, another output is returned and this value is the correlation of our complete observations. In the previous examples, I have shown how to calculate the correlations between only two variables. However, we can also use the core function to create a correlation matrix based on an input data frame. So for this, we first need to create a data frame, as you can see in line 24 of the code. And within this data frame, I'm specifying the x and y variables that we have created before. And I'm adding another variable, which is called C. And this variable also contains randomly distributed values. And I'm storing the output of this in a new data frame object that I'm calling data. So after running line 24 of the code, you can see that this new data frame is appearing at the top right. And we can print the first six rows of this data frame by using the head function, as you can see in line 25. So after running this line of code, you can see that we have created a new data frame containing three randomly distributed variables, x, y, and c. Now, if we want to create a correlation matrix based on this data frame, we can use the core function, as you can see in line 27. And in this case, I'm applying this function to the entire data frame. So after running 927 of the code, you can see that a correlation matrix is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this correlation matrix shows the correlations between all of the variables in our data frame. So for instance, the columns Y and X have a correlation of 0 0.637 and the variables X and C have a correlation of minus 0 0.068. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.